let's let's start talking about this. Have you ever, Brian, have you ever seen a billionaire prison raped? And I'm not talking about Jeffrey Epstein. I have not, no. And I, and there's dispute whether he was actually a billionaire, but well, th- 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 we're not talking about him anyway. It happened this past week. All Elite Wrestling announced they had signed our little dog pockets. Our little dog pockets to a contract. And this is something that they were actually bragging about. I I, I don't know where to start. Because for one thing, when, when you're when you're not that well versed in a particular even though you might be a great businessman in other fields of endeavor when you're not that well versed in one specific thing that you might be diversifying yourself into you're supposed to hire people that know something about that field or experts in that field and can guide you until you get your footing right the people that poor old Tony Khan, I'm going to have to start calling him poor old Tony now, that poor old Tony Khan has surrounded himself with actually thought that it was a good idea not only to spend his money, but spend, from what I'm hearing on a number of these people, about five times as much as they get paid by anybody else, not because they're worth it, but because (laughs) they're friends, I guess. There's no rhyme or reason to this. They are, they are, this is becoming a modern day version of Gordon Scazzari. And I'm sorry to have to say this, but the first thing I said to Tony Khan, I'm not allowed to say a lot of what we talked about because I signed a piece of paper that I wouldn't. I don't know if it, if it's been over a year, maybe the statute of limitations have run out. A lot of this is public knowledge by now anyway. But the first thing I said to Tony Khan was, I don't want a job from you. So I'll be the only one to be telling you the truth. And the prophecy has come true. I also, uh, who wouldn't be excited, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, for all the people, oh, he hates all elite wrestling. He wants all elite. I was excited, yes, that a billionaire was going to start a wrestling promotion and put it on fucking Turner Television. I was excited about that for about five or ten minutes until I heard who he was going into business with. And then I knew what was going to happen, and the prophecy has come true. Everything that I figured based on the fact that for whatever reason, this guy who has been successful in other worlds, who has his family has a ton of money, he has a ton of money, everybody's got a ton of money. He's been a fan of wrestling for years and years and years. He said this to me, and I've read this, and I've had people tell me this to back it up. He's read the Wrestling Observer. Maybe that's where he's gone wrong. Over the past few years, since Uncle Dave's dementia has come to the forefront, (laughs) <laughs> He's still good on facts and history, but his opinion has taken a sharp turn south. I would have thought that someone like that would have by now realized what is going on around him, that he has placed his faith and hooked his wagon to the cosplay wrestlers that are going to, no matter what, make sure that they get their friends useless though they may be a fucking job a highly paid job at the expense of everybody else in the wrestling business who needs a, an alternative to Vince McMahon an alternative to the WWE a viable big budget second promotion fuck all them we're going to get our cute friends that want to cosplay wrestling a job and we're going to drain this fucking guy and we're not even going to fucking try to make it look good that is apparently what's going on now. I don't know what the Young Bucks have to say because did they have both blocked me on Twitter. Both the Young Bucks, Matt Buck and Nick Buck. Be, and and um, I, a lot of people will say, Cornette, you're one to talk about blocking people on Twitter. I don't know. I have 160-something thousand followers, and I've blocked probably more than that on Twitter. But my blocking philosophy is this. If you're egregiously pro-Trump, pro-Republican, pro-conservative, pro-gun, pro-foolishness of that nature, you get blocked if you admit it to me in public. <laughs> if you support shit stain, the Archbishop of Tallenberry, you get blocked. And if you support the cosplay wrestlers and this bullshit, you get blocked. But I don't block the cosplay wrestlers themselves because I want them 
to know exactly what I think about them, and I want them to know what I say about them because I want them to be apprised of the situation and know that everything that I say is true, and that's, that's why, actually, that's why they blocked me. That's why the Young Bucks blocked me because their pussies need powdered on a more regular basis than any of these other pussies that need powdered. They are the most fragile little fucking young fucks I've ever seen. They get their feelings hurt. They can't stand it when I tell the truth because it's the truth. And I'm the only one that they hear it from. Everybody else wants a job or a payoff out of them or out of Tony Khan, but I have principles. That's why I told the first thing I told him was I don't want a fucking job. I didn't realize until a few minutes into the conversation that he was going to give these other people a job. Then I was like, oh, fuck, maybe I could have saved the wrestling business. But the Young Bucks blocked me on Twitter, but they did say, well, we'd burn our money before we'd line that carny's pockets. Like, now I'm a carny. The only one in this whole fucking equation that's telling the truth that I'm the carny. Shock jock. Shock, and I'm a shock jock. They would, they would be shocked if they saw what was in my jock, but nevertheless. <laughs> and we would burn our money. First of all, you broke dick dogs. It's not your money. It's another guy's money that you're fucking draining off of him with his blood. To give your fucking little friends, your little friends and your little playhouse, your little tree house, your little fucking play wrestlers, a job on his money that he and his family worked for. And that's there, some, this one TMZ wannabe, and why you'd want to be anything related to TMZ, I have no idea, but some TMZ wannabe actually tweeted me over the weekend. Start out with serious question. And then proceeded to ask, shouldn't there be different rules for different promotions? Because after all, fuckwit championship wrestling in Idaho or whatever fucking mud show did that bullshit with poor old Mance Warner, who I used to like, fuckwit championship wrestling has invisible brothers and their fans love it. And when I fucking basically told him to piss off and who the fuck are you? Then he got all fucking mad because he, well, I just tried to ask you a serious question to get your mindset. And you replied to me in such a demeaning manner because you asked me a serious question about whether there ought to be an invisible tag team. You fucking bearded fuck. The only thing he looks like, I'll tell you this. The guy looks like Joey Ryan, except he looks like Joey Ryan. If Joey Ryan was really deep down, happy to be Joey Ryan, he's got that goofy smile on his face with the beard and the pubic hair and everything else. But he looks like he's really happy to be a fucking no talent dick. Whereas Ryan, you can tell deep down, he's got that look. He's like, yeah, fuck. I have to do this to make a living. But anyway, it, it, that <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that it's not even the the goofy fans' fault because all the goofy cosplay wrestling fans will on Twitter. Oh, you're an old man. You don't like fun. Wrestling's supposed to be silly. There is a there is a corollary here. There's a, there's evidence here of a connection. It's not the fans' fault as much as it is the wrestlers' fault. They can't get over doing it right. They don't have the talent to do this appropriately, so they tell everybody. It's okay to have an invisible man in a match. It's okay. Wrestling is a big joke. It's okay to have fun and laugh at us because that way the gullible fucks that like them think that it's okay to like shit like that. And then they can get over in the process. It makes the entire rest of the wrestling business look stupid and foolish and et cetera. But you know, they don't care because it's not them. They don't have the, testicles or the guts or the principles or the standards or just the pride and integrity of a guy like Harley race who sometimes put the business in front of his business. It's just all about, Oh, can we get over and have people cheer at us? And Oh golly, if Jim Cornette says something bad about us on Twitter, we're going to block him and it will block all of his fans because they're telling the truth. And somebody's going to figure out that we ought to be wrestling nine year old grade school kids. Cause that's how tough we are. We can only beat nine year old grade school kids. Cause we're big pussies and we need our pussies powdered on a regular fucking basis. It's the same thing with the Republican Trump suckers. The wrestlers tell these gullible, simple-minded cretins, it's okay to have invisible men. It's okay to hit people over the head with dildos and the matches and have dance routines and have my little dog pockets, play kicking people in the shins. 
and the fucking painted yellow and all this other shit. It's okay. And so the fans believe, well, they're wrestlers. They ought to know. It's the same thing that Trump and the Republic fucks are doing with their gullible sap suckers. The media tells the truth about Trump, the Washington Post, the New York Times, NBC News, major magazines. Fake news. No, don't believe it. And because they want to think that somehow this is the right way to go about things, they believe it because they're idiots and they want to believe it and they want to like this fucking clown. They want to like these fucking young fucks. They want to like Kenny Olivier and his fucking drama. So it's the same thing. The conspiracy theorists used to, if you said, well, they got the aliens at Area 51 and, you know, fucking uh, Ted Cruz's father was on the grassy knoll and Hillary Clinton runs a fucking pedophile ring out of a pizza place in the Bronx. Used to, if you said shit like that in public, people would look at you like you had steaming turds hanging out of your mouth and somebody would be keeping an eye on you, hopefully members of local law enforcement. But now the president of the United States retweets this 4chan, 8chan, fuck you chan shit and gives it credibility because people, well, the president, if he says it, it must be true. It's the same fucking thing. You know, Jim, to go back to something you said earlier, certainly there are elements of Gordon Scazzari, but if you've seen any of these pictures of Tony Khan at whatever, the upfronts or whatever, wherever he is with these guys, and you've seen that look on his face, I think there's also an element of Tom Cassati in there. The whole, like, I want to pay these guys to go on vacation. Oh, my me. God. I want to pay these guys to hang out. Let's be hey, friends. Hey, the, head, the headbangers enjoyed Bermuda, by the way. <laughs> um, but, and you know, and I, I hate, I, I, Tony Khan has never said a crossword to me, and we've never had a crossword, and, and he just, I hate to knock him, but at some point, Tony, you're going to have to take fucking control of your own situation here and realize that you're being ill-served by these fucking clown show play wrestlers and getting their friends jobs. There's talent out there that you could be signing or buying away from other people. Probably anybody but Vince would be more than happy to fucking deal with you for less than you're paying some of these fucking independent fucking shysters and outlaw mud show fucking freaks. And you could buy talent. But it's a, it's 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 the same fucking thing. Tell people it's okay, and because you're in a spot, because you play something on television, they think it's okay. Whether it be the wrestlers say, "Oh, everything's okay." Well, you're wrestlers; you should know. And nobody has any respect. Not in in that. It may be Cody. Maybe, but if Cody had some respect for the fucking business, I've got to say this out loud now. Even though everything he's done's been great been a model of pro wrestling, but if he had any respect for the business, he wouldn't be hanging around the two little grade schoolers and the fucking, you know, a a, a fucking Tony award winner because they're fucking mentally deficient. But now to, to use this guy's money on this, 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 they're, they're short, the bearded lady, and they would have the whole carnival. That's what somebody said on Twitter. And it's the same thing with the Trump fucks because they're equally gullible groups of people. And by the way, for the record, it's his dad's money. It's not He's not a billionaire. His dad's a billionaire. Well, I bet she's got more in his checking account than you and me, do, though, to be honest with you. But yeah, but how much of it was, you know, how much of it was... I don't know where it came from. <laughs> My money was hard-earned. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? My little dog pocket. But you said, but you see, you presume in what you say that it wasn't his idea. You 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 presume that he was he's been talked into this he's been swindled by whoever as opposed to he's going to these shows he may actually enjoy pockets and say you know what I want this guy on my show I want but, the ding dongs I make me ding dongs I want ding dongs you know but I mean? all the things he said in public some things he said the same thing to me in private he's a sports statistician he wanted wins and losses to matter he said that, that Turner wanted a sports-based presentation that, that we're going to bring professional wrestling back to the people. And this is the exact antithesis, the opposite, the uh, anathema of it's anything but. Well, I, why would you, if, if, 
Why would you go out and say we're going to give you chocolate and we're going to talk about all this chocolate we're, we're going to give you for six months and then show up with fucking vanilla or strawberry? I, I, it's, it seems like it would have been the, the story straight off the bat. I don't know. Why, I'm so conflicted now. I don't know what to believe. But we're going to keep on the story because now it's a mission. I'm fucking, I'm, it may cause me to have a stroke, but I'm going to watch this fucking show until either they get it right, which in that case would, you would see a number of executive vice presidents being fired and on the unemployment line (laughs) or until they fucking depart this mortal coil. Well, One on. or the other. Hold on. Two things on that note, Jim. One, we should probably remind everyone in a second what's going on with the drive through this Monday. But two, if you're willing to watch them to that extent, is there anything else we can get you to watch and review here on the air? No, actually, because now this is a mission. I'm going to see. I'm going to either see if, if they will smarten up as they go along and whether they can do it in a limited period of time that they're going to have or whether it's going to be the spectacular train crash at the bottom of the ravine. Well, now, you being the inventor or co-inventor of the five-star rating system, originally the four-star rating system, have you developed any sort of new rating system to determine a successful AEW event or match or one that is substandard? Well, actually, I think I'm going to have to worry. uh, worry. I think I'm going to have to work on that. I'm probably going to have to hook a blood pressure cuff up to my arm (laughs) and keep it uh, you know, keep it applied throughout the entire program. And any time that my blood pressure is normal or under, that means that they're actually doing something that should be seen on a professional wrestling program. Any time that my blood pressure is above normal, that means that they got more of their cosplay friends, whether it be my little dog pockets or, you know, whatever. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to call some of the other ones anymore. I don't want to appear racist um, or sexist or phobic of some description. And then it it probably, yeah, I guess if I have a stroke and die, that means that that, that's when they finally got so bad that they got kicked off the air. You want to have a stroke? Think about the idea that in 20 years of Cauliflower Alley, you'll have pockets and Marco stunt. (laughs) Oh, I forgot. Yeah, that's right. I I don't even think we mentioned they signed the, the, the grade school kid. They're going to get him killed. I think we said that last week. Anyway. 